Hello and welcome to Give Your Oracle Databases the Protection to Stand Up to Any Threat. Today's webinar is sponsored by Rubric and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Scott Becker. I'm from Actual Tech Media and I am excited to be your moderator for this special event. Now, before we get into today's great content, we do have a few housekeeping items that will help you get the most out of this session. First off, we want this to be an informative event for you, so we encourage any questions in the questions box in our webinar control panel. While we're not able to do a live Q&A session at the end of this session, we will pass along all of your questions for the rubric team so they can get back to you later. The Q&A panel is also the place to let us know about any technical issues that you might be experiencing. A browser refresh will fix most audio, video, and slide advancement issues. But if that doesn't work, just let us know in the Q&A and we'll provide further technical assistance. Now next, in the handout section of your webinar control panel, you'll find that we are offering uh, several resources and I'd especially like to call your attention to three PDFs from Rubric. There's one on Rubric for cloud native protection. There's a definitive guide to zero trust data security. And there's one on Rubric Zero Trust for Microsoft Environment, so I encourage you to access those resources now and share them with your friends and colleagues. Now, at the end of this webinar event, we will be awarding a $300 Amazon gift card to one lucky registrant. Of course, you must be in attendance during the live event to qualify for the prize. Official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can be found in the handout section. Just scroll to the bottom, and you'll find the prize terms and conditions link there. With that, Let's get to today's fantastic content. It is my pleasure to introduce you to our presenters today. We have two database solutions architects from Rubric on the session. So we're joined by Raffaella Marticelli and Julian Zagoda. And now I'm going to turn things over to Raffaella to get us started. In this session, we're going to talk about how can you protect your Oracle environment with Rubric. So first, a quick introduction. I'm Raffaella Marticelli. I'm a database solution architect at Rubric. I've been working here for almost three years now. Uh, and before, I worked as an Oracle GBA for over 12 years. And I have Julian with me. Can you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everyone. I'm Julian Zagoda. I'm a solutions architect with Rubric. I've been working on Oracle for over 20 years and specializing in Oracle backup, specifically this last five years with Rubric. Um, on today's agenda, we're going to address the main challenge the GBA teams are having. So Julian and I will uh, answer all these questions over this presentation. Um, so most GBAs are having challenges managing hundreds of databases is spread between on-premise and on-cloud, and each environment has different requirements. So how can you easily back up all your Oracle database? So how can you easily access the backup that you have and guarantee you be able to uh, recover uh, against a ransomware attack if you need it? Another challenge that uh, the GBAs are having is with backup and recovery times. So how can you have more efficient and faster backups? And how to add more value to your backup and be able to make it available for other users? So let's start with data protection. So with the search in ransomware attacks across many industries worldwide, data protection starts to be top of mind of any IT manager. So how can you guarantee you'll be prepared in case of a ransomware attack? In the past, the most important function of Oracle backups were to recover from a system failure. Now there are all kinds of new threats that include direct malicious attacks on our systems, including the databases. To recover from these attacks, we need backups that are safe and immune from those attacks so they can be that last line of defense. To achieve this, modern database backups should be air-gapped, so they're not available on any network, immutable, so they can't be changed, edited, or encrypted, have retention locks, so they can't be expired, are tricked into being expired outside of the configured retention period, and of course, always be encrypted. Rubric achieves this with zero trust data protection, along with an air-gapped and immutable storage system or vault. Backups land in the local Rubric cluster, then they are converted into an immutable patch file, moved across the logical air gap, and stored in an append-only file system designed for storing backup data. When you need to access your backups, a copy of the backup you require is materialized across the air gap and presented to the host being restored in less than a minute. The original backups remain in the vault untouched, and this ensures that your backups are always safe and available no matter what happens. 
So I understand how important it is to have your backup uh, being kept in a safe platform. Uh, but as I mentioned before, most companies have hundreds of databases. So how can you have these safe backups uh, and still uh, be able to manage all your backups in an easy way? So with Rubik Security Cloud, you have a single pane of glass. And from there, you can access all your environments, and that includes managing databases in different data centers or on cloud. And of course, this session is about Oracle, but you could use the same platform uh, to manage all the other workloads in your environment. So that can include other databases like SQL or GB2, uh, cloud databases like RGS or Azure SQL, or even VMs or FileSet. And from there, uh, you also can configure the reports. So for example, you could uh, have a report showing the status of your backups and receive them uh, by email. Uh, regarding your Oracle backups, keep in mind that all your data you'll be backed up remains in your local cluster. And if you need another layer of security, you can also replicate it across multiple data centers. As part of everything Rubrik Security Cloud does to protect your enterprise, it provides a single pane of glass to see and manage all of your enterprise's backups, and in this case, all of your Oracle backups. This is the data protection landing page where you kind of get an overview of the system. And uh, to see the particular workloads, we can drill into the inventory. So in the inventory, we have some of the objects that are backed up and we'll go to the Oracle databases. So one thing with Rubrik Security Cloud and Rubrik in general is we have multi-tenancy and role-based access control. So you can set up an organization, say a D DBA organization. So the DBAs can have access to the objects that they use and manage, in this case, Oracle databases, but it can be more granular than that. You can have certain DBAs have access to certain databases and only be able to perform certain actions on those. So you have full control there, but that allows you to easily manage large environments. So here, uh, we have a list of all my Oracle hosts and rat clusters with, uh, with databases. I can see those as individual databases, which will show rack databases, single instance databases, or data guard groups. And the data guard groups are actually broken into a separate list. Also in RSC, you can view centralized reports so you can, uh, report on your entire environment from one location. So here I have a custom report set up. It's just a simple uh, report on the status of all my database backups. This uh, can be customized, it can be emailed out. You can also get alerts on failures, but Here's uh, showing all my databases, the location, how much data was transferred, logical uh, data reduction, things like that. But you could set this up however you'd like and be able to see your entire environment in one report or in one email, for example. So that's uh, how you can centrally manage your entire environment using Rubrik Security Cloud. Until now, we just presented a little about Rubrik Security Cloud. So you must be wondering, how do we start to protect the Oracle database? So one of the first things you need to do is configure an SLA domain. So this is our name for a backup policy. It's here that you're gonna specify how often you want your backup to run and how long you're gonna keep it. So by default, all your backup is gonna be saved on your local cluster but you can choose to archive backups for longer retention in another location, so a cloud bucket, for example. You can also replicate to multiple locations. Um, it's on the SLA domain that you're gonna define the backup window. So Rubrik will use that period of time to start the backup job. So that means Rubrik is gonna manage all the backup jobs for you. That includes database and archive log backups. And once you have this SLA domain, you can apply to the Oracle host. So Rubrik will automatically protect every database on that host. So you can create a new database, Rubrik will automatically discover the new database created and protect following the SLA domain that you assign. 
So with this, you can guarantee that all your database will be always protected. The best way to see how SLA domain policies can simplify your backups is actually to see how to create one and how we'll apply it to a database. So setting up an SLA domain is going to be a, a matter of just supplying the frequency and retention of your backups. For specific workloads, there may be other details that you add in, and this will allow that SLA to be able to apply to that workload, though it could still be applied to others. So for Oracle databases, I will add that into the SLA. Then I'm going to set up the frequency and retention of my backups. Most Oracle database backups are going to be a daily backup. Then uh, you might keep that for 14 days, 31 days. Then um, you could also continue to keep longer retentions. You can add in, maybe do a weekly database backup that you keep on Sunday, keep that for the 31 days, keep a monthly for 12 months, and keep a yearly for 10 years if you'd like. And that complicated retention will then be managed by Rubrik. You don't have to do anything more, and it was that easy to set up. For the SLA domain policy, for workloads like Oracle, you may want to specify a snapshot window. That's going to be the backup window. The backups are scheduled by an intelligent scheduler that's going to balance workloads across the cluster and start and manage your backups uh, within that backup window at the optimal time. Then since we do an incremental forever style backup, you can specify when to do that first full. The SLA domain policies also uh, control where those backups might live for their life cycle. You can back that up to a, an archival location and the rubric will archive those off at, at certain point. Uh, say if you wanted to put those onto some public or private cloud, you can then uh, pick that archival location and set how much of your backups you want to keep locally and how much you're going to keep on that archival location. We can also replicate those. You can have those replicated to secondary uh, locations. Say you have multiple data centers, you can have your backups replicated to that other data center and they'll be there and ready to go. We can have multiple replication targets. Then specifically for Oracle, you have to add in the archive log backup frequency and retention. The retention's going to be how long continuous archive logs are retained on rubric. Beyond that, we'll always save the archive logs required to make every backup consistent. So every backup, no matter how old it is, will have a, a group of archive logs with it that'll allow you to make that backup consistent so you can actually use those to recover the database. The minimum backup time is every 15 minutes. And after we back up those archive logs, we will delete those on the host unless you tell us to do otherwise. So if you want those to be retained, you can set a delay on the retention or you can skip that all together and do that um, through your own mechanism. When we delete the, the archive logs, we are respecting and following the archive log deletion policy set on those the particular databases. So if you have a data guard environment and you have set the archive log deletion policy to shipped or applied to standby or all standbys, we'll respect that. So if we go to do a backup, back the logs up and they have not been shipped or applied, we will skip deletion at that point. And then on the next archive log backup, we will check again. And if they have been skipped, uh, shipped or applied, we'll delete them. If not, we'll continue to defer those. So you do not need to use a delay to for your standbys. People though will do that as a secondary mechanism. So that's it for setting an SLA policy up. I would have just created that all, all that uh, complication with, with uh, in just a you know minute or so. So now I've created this SLA policy. I have these 
So to use those, you're just going to apply those to your objects. In this case, your Oracle databases. You can apply that to a host or cluster, or you can apply that to an individual database. If you apply it at the host and cluster level, you will protect all the databases on that host or cluster, including future databases. So if you add a database, it would be automatically protected. So the having the SLA is the first part of, of the backups. And the, these also, you can have separation of duties here. You could have uh, only certain people are allowed to change or modify SLAs. There are all kinds of controls to add the kind of protections that a, a big enterprise needs. So, but setting up backups is just a matter of adding the host to rubric. So you do that first, you install a, a an RPM on the host or, or package that will start the rubric backup service. Once it's there, you add in the host name, Oracle user, the Linux user that's running Oracle or discovery user, which is an Oracle external user. Then once that's added, we will discover the databases running on that host. So for this host, for example, we discovered one data guard group, there's a primary running and another database. If we go back here, I have a rat cluster that had two databases running on it. Both were discovered. So to back those up, all I'm going to do is apply that SLA. So say I wanted to back up both databases on that rack cluster at once. I can select that, manage protection, pick one of my Oracle SLAs, and that could be it. I'll put it next and I'm done. I have some advanced settings where I can control the number of RMAN channels. And with Rubric, one thing, the RMAN channels will be distributed across nodes in the Rubric cluster. So every time you add, use another channel, you're actually using another backup destination. So as you add RMAN channels, you're not only scaling performance on the Oracle side by adding RMAN processes, you're scaling performance on the Rubric side by adding backup destinations. For rack clusters, you can specify the node order. You can also distribute backups across the, the rack nodes. If it's data guard, you can back up from the primary stand or the standby. We'll also manage the uh, archive logs on all members of the data guard group. And so I would assign that and your database this is, will now be protected to meet that SLA. So it's it's uh, pretty simple to set up. You you potentially have these SLAs created in advance. They're your um, going to be your policies. They might be set by your your backup mans or policy makers in your company. And then you would have those apply those to your databases, and Rubric will take over the rest, and your backups will be automatic. Another common issue is databases are getting bigger and bigger, and that means it's getting difficult to take full backups. Uh, so for most companies, a full backup can take many hours to run, and this can cause performance issues on the host. So for this reason, GBAs ended up choosing a mix of weekly fulls and incremental backups, for example. And that makes the backup and the recovery strategy more complex, and this is also impacting the recovery times as well. So how Rubik can help with this challenge? Rubik's Oracle backups are comprised of both database backups and archive log backups. They are scheduled independently and can run concurrently. They are all done with RMAN using RMAN disk channels over NFS exports from the Rubric cluster. The way the backups work is they're scheduled from the Rubric cluster from the, the intelligent scheduler there. So you have centralized scheduling. The intelligent scheduler will find the best time to run your backup in the provided backup window. And it does that by balancing workloads across the system to find that best time. When the backup starts, the rubric connector will mount NFS shares on that Oracle host. It will then run a custom RMAN script that was created for that particular uh, backup job. When that script's completed, the NFS shares are unmounted, 
and everything that was written there is converted into an immutable patch file, moved across that logical error gap, and stored within that vault. To do the backups efficiently, we use an incremental forever style backup using RMAN's incremental merge technology. So for that type of backup, the very first time it runs, RMAN will see that there is not a, a previous full, so it will do a full level zero image copy of your database. That full image copy is stored immutably in the append-only file system. And then on every backup after that, RMAN will see that there is already a, a level zero image copy. So it will do a level one incremental backup. When that incremental backup is completed, RMAN will apply that incremental to a copy of the previous full. The, the, the full we've saved is immutable, so it can't be changed. So we'll materialize a copy. Our man will apply that incremental, rolling that copy forward to become the new full backup. And then that new full backup is what's stored in the, immutably in the file system or vault. So that process repeats forever. You no longer need to do a full backup because you're rolling your, full, your backup forward to be an up-to-date full on every backup run. The incrementals are standard RMAN incrementals and they can take advantage of RMAN's blockchain tracking. So they can be very efficient and fast and allows you to back up large environments with large numbers of databases within a, a, a smaller backup window. So it's a way to get your backups very efficient and from both a backup time perspective and also uh, from restores, because you're always restoring from a rolled forward full. And of course, we need to be able to use the backups in any recovery situation. But ideally, we could add more value to the backup. So let's talk about our recovery options. So we have a few automated options. Um, to make it clear, all of these options are used in Arma. So on the left side, we have options to recover to the same host. So uh, the first option is uh, restore. So that is the convention Armon Restore, copying the data and restoring in your local storage. So instant recover is the option that we have to have your production database up and running from rubric disks is keeping the whole restore operation. So how does that work? So we mount the disks with your backup using NFS protocol. Armon starts to use the backups as your data files. Uh, Armon applies the archive logs to the point time that you choose. And that's it. You have your database up and running in a few minutes. Doesn't matter the size of this database. So you also have the option to recover a single tape space, for example, or use the backup files, uh, make them available, and use your own Armon commands or scripts to, to recover in any option that you choose. Uh, similar occurs uh, with the different host recover, that is the options on the right side. So we have the clone option that is basically an Oracle duplicate database. So that is going to create a new database in your own storage. If you use the mount option, that is the uh, same idea as the instance recovery that I just explained before. Uh, so you're going to make your database available running from rubric disks. And again, you can use your own backup files to recover uh, with your own scripts if you, if you choose. Now let me show you how you would use those recoveries from Rubrik Security Cloud. If I go back over here to my database inventory, I'll go down to uh, that rat cluster with two databases on it. Drilling into a particular database, I have my overview and my calendar view of the recovery points. Rubric shows recovery points, so you know you can actually restore from those times. Drilling into a particular day, I show the timeline, which are my recovery points, but as in Oracle DBA, I kind of think of those as the archive log sequences, with the bit of red here on the end being the archive logs that have not been backed up yet since I'm doing those every four hours. Once that backup runs, that'll all be green. The database backups are the camera icon, which are the snapshots of your backups, which are your full image copies. So if I pick a time on the timeline, I'll be restoring from this full image copy, rolling forward with these archive logs. 
We also are including the auto backups of the control file and the SP file. So for recovery options, I can drag the slider, set the time, or go to the latest recovery point. From there, I have a number of recovery options. So for alternate host restores, where I uh, would want to clone or make the data available um, for secondary uses, um, whether it's for developers, for testing, for um, auditors to uh, you know retrieve a dropped object, uh, anything like that, um, we have both a clone and a live mount. The clone is going to be the standard RMAN duplicate. So I can say, pick another rat cluster to duplicate the host to. I could change the name. I can use a custom pre or post script. So if I needed to run a script to say, scrub some data, uh, change passwords, delete DB links, I could. I can use a custom P file. Otherwise we'll use the parameters from the source. We can also change those so you can compensate for dissimilar environments. So these, we have uh, a number of parameters that can be changed from memory to uh, file locations to compensate for those dissimilar environments. And finally, you can, we are uh, multi-tenant compliant or aware. So you can do clones with all the PDBs or some of the PDBs if you're running multi-tenant databases. So that's the clone, but we also have something a little different called an, an live mount. And we have this for VMs and SQL Server and lots of the objects we back up. For this, we will start the instance running on the auxiliary host, but open it running off of rubric exported NFS shares. So this allows you to spin up a copy of your database much faster without requiring the storage on the host. So for that, you could select the, the live mount, pick your location. In this case, I'm gonna do a live mount, a rack database on a rack cluster. And you have the same options with pre or post scripts, the same uh, uh, options to compensate for dissimilar environment and the same option to uh, use or restore all of the PDBs or live mount all of the PDBs or just a subset. So I did this live mount right before this demo to show you the results of that. I'm gonna go over here to the events page, which is keeping track of all the events that have happened on the database. Every backup shows up here. I can drill in and see the details. Um, but in this case, it's that live mount. So I ran that. Now this is a 8.73 uh, terabyte database. So in 18 minutes, we restored that database or uh, we started the instance and opened that database off of uh, rubric NFS and, it's a, and converted it to rack. So this is a fully read write usable copy of the database just running off of rubric presented NFS shares. Now these are copies of the backups. So they're running off the backups, but not the, not the original backups. The original backups are untouched. This is running off of a copy of the backups presented on NFS. So it's a way to quickly spin up a copy of the database, use it, and then when you're done, you can unmount it and it goes away. Now going back over here to the other recovery options, I'll go right to the latest recovery point. I There is also a restore of the source database. So this is an automated RMAN restore. It's just a couple of clicks, but there's protections on it. The database has to be shut down before you can override it. And it um, will restore everything from the rubric backups and with the option of rolling forward through remaining archive logs in the host. The instantly recover is similar to the live mount, but back to the source. Say you lost your Oracle storage and uh, you, you or couldn't restore your database or you have a, a large database and you want to get back online very quickly, you can do that instantly recover, which will restart the instance, 
but open it running off of the backups on rubric exported NFS. So your database can be up and running, fully functioning. And then in the background, after when you are able to, you can move those data files off of those rubric NFS shares back to the original or primary storage using Oracle's online data file move. So the database can be up while you're moving those. And the other option we have here um, is just a RMAN validate. So if you need to validate your backups for some reason or want to be able to uh, periodically run a validate to verify your backups are completely restorable, this will be run in RMAN validate, which is a block, complete check of your backups to make sure they are uh, always uh, fully recoverable. So those are the recovery options that we have and the ways that you can make your data available quickly and easily uh, for whatever purpose you need. We're getting to the end of it. Uh, so just, just a quick sum up here. Uh, on this presentation, we talked about the benefits of having a centralized platform and manage all your environments from there. Uh, we showed how easy it is to configure the backup of your Oracle database. Uh, we mentioned the importance of protecting your backup against any type of ransomware. And of course, we explained how Rubrik offers a quicker way to run your database backups and also our automated recovery options where you can even have your database available without restore the data, for example. Thanks everyone for your time. I hope you enjoyed the content and find it useful. Thanks everyone. Appreciate you taking the time to listen to this presentation. All right, and before we wrap up, we have one more piece of business. It's the Amazon gift card prize drawing. And the winner of the $300 Amazon gift card today is Rick Riffle from Ohio. So congratulations to Rick. We'll be in touch to get to your card. And with that, on behalf of the actual tech media team, I want to thank Rubric for making this event possible. And thanks as always for attending. That concludes today's event. Have a great rest of your day.